IPOB is worse than a terrorist organization. IPOB is a satanic movement. Asari Dokuba. Welcome to the news and please subscribe to our channel. The prescribed indigenous people of Biafra IPOB has been called out by former militant leader Asari Dokubo. Dokubo has accused the indigenous people of Biafra for being of being a satanic movement. Well, 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 in recent times, I don't know what has happened. I don't know what happened. Sincerely, the Southeastern people, they are the only one who can actually come out and say if these outbots are true because before now, Asari was not, there was a, once upon a time, it was on the side of IPOB. Now it's no longer on their side. Sincerely, I don't know. But if you have been following his outburst, it is getting, it is like he releases one a day. <laughs> He's on these people's case like, you know, 247. Okay, recently now, he's now calling them out saying they are a terrorist. They're not just a terrorist organization. They are a satanic movement. Once upon a time, the Southeasterners, you know, they were quiet. They are peace-loving people. In fact, they're one of a state or Southeastern region. It's actually one of a state where you can go and at the end of the day, you have a very peaceful stay. If you're somebody who you are based in um, very busy cities like, let's say, Lagos, Patakot, and you do a lot of stressful activities there, sincerely, the southeastern region are one of the places, or is one of the region, you can actually go there. You have your rest, very serene, very quiet, very calm. Like, you know, that is the, that is the those who, who know the southeastern region very well, who go there, they will tell you of a fact that is true. All of a sudden, then, this IPO movement started. And sincerely, it was born out of marginalization. It was, it is, well, I say, it is a, as a result of marginalization, oppression, bad governance and leadership in that particular region, people looking for ways to express themselves so that the government will hear them and all of that and all of that. They came together, they did not come together, I think, Somebody saw them. They have been murmuring about it. They have been saying things about it. They are their sideline. And sincerely, obviously, they have been right. Also, they also have their own blame because they don't engage in politics. People will always say, find your problem. But they came together and my, my thoughts were, these people came together for the fact that they wanted to get the attention of a government. We thinking that, oh, Nigeria, you know, at the end of the day, and just just called these people aside. It is not money. It is not money that these people want. That Nigerian will call these people aside and at the end of the day, you know, listen, at least get to even know why exactly this particular people are out, you know, making so much noise. I, sincerely, I thought, okay, we are in a democratic state, so they will call these people, but they never did. Instead, what the government did was the more they made noise, it's like the louder they made, the governments made their own noise. They returned whatever these people did with violence, like they should be calm. And, you know, like you're a class teacher in a class and there is this noise coming from your class and all you think you should do is not even ask questions. You don't even care, oh, what caused the noise? Why is this person particular making noise? You just come and you start whipping the whole class. Both those in, you know those days in like secondary school? Oh, those days. So it was seeming like that. Without even asking the question, oh, what even happened or what transpired? You just make up your, ah, these people, they have been making noise. They are noise-making class. I'm going to teach them a lesson. And that has been it. Without even finding, okay, why are these people always making noise? Is it because they, somebody is fighting in the class or somebody is bullying one, another person? You're not even taking time to even find out. Now, these people, they have grown from, they, they became thick-skinned. They were like, we don't care what you do, you know. In fact, it's just saying, okay, they no longer want equity, justice, and fairness that they want out of Nigeria. You know, and even with that, people were like, eh, if you want to go now, go now. And I am, all I'm saying is, everything is born out of what was told. I kid you not, if you are, or if you listen to those who are present when, you know, this Nigerian civil war, wars as in when it when it was still on they are not going to come and tell you that they want to go through that path to be sincere they will not tell you it is 
what they have heard. Most people are basing their, their, their thought, as in they are building on what they hear. Hear say, not facts. Oh, these people have been, they always cry, marginalization, they always do that is how they cry. Have you really sat down to listen to these people? Have you given them the opportunity to talk? Have you called them and say, oh, this is it? Because in 2017, you know, when, I think before then, Carlo was, you know, already doing his, uh, what did they call it, Radio Biafra and all of that. And the federal government, we started hearing all the federal government calling that the dialogue was going on all of a sudden. His house was like, they went to his house, killing his people. Like, I'm trying to say, okay, this thing that turned, that was, that was heading for somewhere good, before, you know, it's something that destroyed it and, you know, these people are now like, they don't care. They no longer care what happens. The worst was now like, oh, the federal government thought, eh, this man has been inciting them. Maybe when we arrest him, maybe when we, when you put, when you put him in a place where he's not going to be able to do what he's doing, the people will calm down. But unfortunately, these people keep, they keep like, they keep up. It is like it was rekindled, whatever they were doing. And so as I said, these people now, I want, I, me, and I believe some other people feel if that this can be solved by dialogue. But some people, I don't understand because of hearsay, what history has done to us in this country. I feel people are holding on to, uh, they said it is the Southeast Senate that looked for trouble before the Civil War. They killed, if you come, why I'm saying this because... If you have been following the trend, if you finish reading news articles online and you go to the comment section, you will see a lot of hate and prejudice in people's speech. Sincerely, some people even go, go about insulting the other just for having a different, as in, let's say for instance, you are from the south, you are from the southeastern region and you have a conversation with a, a, a northerner. Before you know it, insults are flying. Sometimes, that's why I'm saying, history will correct a lot. Now, I don't know why Asari Dukubo is saying this, but sincerely, recently, the Southeastern economy, it is going down. It has been going down for a very long time. I guess that is why he's coming out to give all this outburst. And I just hope that at the end of the day, this outburst, they are very necessary. And our government, as in the, the reason for him making this outburst unnecessary, and the government, as in the told the part of dialogue, and tell these people, okay, in fact, not just these people, every geopolitical zone comes together. Let us address this issue once and for all. Okay, on this note, you have come to the end of the news. We say thank you for tuning in to listen.